Hey, it's Meg, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a junk journal tutorial for you guys, which is long awaited and much requested. So I'm gonna show you how I create my A6 uh, junk journals. These are really beginner friendly and it's just one simple binding method um, that you can replicate for as thick as you want your journal to be. So this one you can see here has four signatures and this one, um, I've done a bit of a hidden sort of binding, but this one has three signatures. So totally up to you how chunky you want your journal to be. Um, but you can basically just sort of replicate this method however thick you want. So you can have two signatures or four signatures. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, you can totally use what you have around the house. So I'll show you what I have collected to use in the one we're gonna make today. Um, but aside from the papers, you will need um, a sewing needle, something to sew with. I use embroidery thread purely because about five years ago now, um, I went to a charity shop and they had an absolute job lot of embroidery thread and I'm still working my way through it. So that's why I use embroidery thread, just because I have so much of it to hand. Um, but you can totally use um, any sort of string or um, I wouldn't really recommend cotton because that might be a bit too thin but as long as it's you know sturdy enough that it's not going to sort of tear um, that would be good and then obviously some scissors. In terms of papers so a staple of my junk journals is always tea dyed papers and um, there's several tutorials on how to tea dye papers if you don't know how to do it already um, I'll link some down below, but essentially I have just taken um, printer paper and um, also some graph paper just from a pad um, and just tea dyed it, so really simple. And they dry really crinkly. If you want your papers to be less wrinkly, you could lay them under a heavy book just to flatten them out a bit, but I think it adds nice um, texture to our journal. What I want you to do is go through your stash of papers and books um, or maybe you go to like a top charity shop, thrift shop um, and you'll find some really cheap just like books and different things like that that you can use. Um, doesn't really matter what's in them because we're obviously going to create on top of them anyway. Um, so I just have these scraps of, um, I don't even know what these are, something that I've tea dyed previously. Um, these are some floral book illustrations. Um, this here, so when you get an old book from the charity shop, the um, end papers at the front and the back of the book will typically have plain paper that is also kind of naturally aged rather than the tea dyed. Um, so they're really nice to use and these are also normally quite sturdy as well. And then just lots of different sort of book pages. I put this in here just to show you. So this is an old um, book page from, gosh, I think this is literally 1915. Um, and it looks really pretty. However, as you can hear, it's really thin. So um, I would just be really mindful when you are collecting your papers to make sure that you've got papers that are thick enough. Because once I fold this, as we will do for um, when we come to bind the journal, it won't be as strong um, and you might find that it'll tear and fall out of your book. So something like this, quite flimsy, um, I wouldn't really use, um, but you can obviously use that when you come to doing ephemera and actual journaling. But for page integrity, make sure you've got like nice thick pages. Um, and typically a lot of old book pages are quite thick anyway. Um, so they're really, like, these are really good to use. You can hear they're quite thick. Um, again, go to the back of your book. Don't ignore that. Typically you'll find the plainer sort of sections or even just the indexes that have really nice text that would be nice for backgrounds. Um, I've got music sheet, again some more, this is a little bit more flimsy so this is more sort of uh, printer paper sort of uh, thickness which you can still use um, but you can hear the difference between this is almost a bit like newspaper whereas even printer paper is still a lot better so um, if you're using printer paper you can certainly duct tea dye that like I have done um, and use that in your journal as well. And yeah, I just use lots of book pages. Um, 
Typically I'll pick out different pages from different books just so that we've got some variety um, in different shapes and sizes, textures, um, even just like the colours um, of the aged papers because I like to work with a lot of neutrals. Um, so even just like a variety of neutrals um, is really nice to work with. And then I just thought I'd show you here. So this is a book I picked up recently from um, a charity shop. Um, just to kind of show you what I would be looking for in a book if I went to a charity shop. Um, so this is obviously quite a big size. So I normally make A6 journals, um, but if you're looking even to make A5 journals, then you'll typically want to try and find bigger books, like bigger than A5. So when you come to fold the pages, you've still got um, a decent page um, within your journal when it's split in half. Um, so I typically go to the gardening section just because I like um, botanicals and florals but, and like I said front papers tend to have really nice thick uh, papers that we can use um, and this one I don't know if it'll pick it up this one's actually really textured as well so I think that's really nice so I'm probably going to use that um, and then nothing too precise just rip it out you want to stray away from anything that's too shiny this is a little bit shiny as you can see, but it's not its not really high gloss like a magazine would be. You want to look for things that are gonna be um, matte um, and easy to work on top of. That's not to say you can't put gesso on top of these pages, um, like clear gesso, white gesso, um, but I think it just makes it a lot easier if they're already matte to begin with. Um, so illustrations like this, I really love. So I'm gonna just ooh, tear this one out and it's not coming out as smoothly as I thought it would. Um, but as you can see, because we've got a decent sized piece of paper, once I fold this in half, um, as we will do in a minute, you can see that that page has retained a lot of the illustration on it. So what we're going to do now is fold our papers in half, um, and it's literally as simple as folding them in half, um, but you want to be wary, obviously, which direction you fold them in, depending on what you want to show. For this one, I folded it this way rather than the other way because I wanted the illustration to go all the way down. So I'm gonna fold all my papers just in half and then I will be right back. Once I've folded all my papers, as you can see here, um, I'm now going to go and sort them just into categories. So I'm going to put my base pages, which are like my plain tea dye pages um, and anything that doesn't have a lot of visual interest um, over in this section. Um, then I'm going to put ones that are sort of smaller pages in another section. Um, these have visual interest, so we'll stick them there. That's plain, again, visual interest. Um, and these are kind of like book pages. It's plain, um, or book pages. Um, these are kind of more standout pages, so I'm gonna put them in their own separate section because these are almost a bit like embellishment pages. I'm gonna put them in a separate pile. So once I've got my sections laid out, I can then go ahead and build my signatures. So I think for this journal, I'm going to do three signatures. Um, and what I do is it's a bit like a pick and mix. So a bit from here, a bit from here, a bit from here. So I'll start off with um, the base layers. So I might pick maybe a couple of these. Um, and typically I do about 10 sheets of paper per signature, but it does depend on the thickness of your paper, so you might want to adjust that depending on, um, like I say, how thick the papers that you're using are. So I'm just going to pick sort of a variety of um, planar pages, um, I think might do four. Um, so I've got a grid paper, a sort of manila colour, this textured paper which is really nice. Um, and then just a tea, st tea stained paper. Um, I might put two of those in actually. So I will just grab these and put them in maybe an order like this. 
on this bit you can really play around with how pages are sitting with each other so there we are we've got our five plain pages and then what I'm going to do is go to my should we call it like a buffet of papers um, and then I might pick one small piece and I'm just going to sort of go through and see what do I think that it would match with what do I think that it would um, go well with so I think it might pair nicely with this um, and my edges are kind of ripped but I think that adds to the effect of the journal so um, I'm gonna pop that one there so that makes six sheets um, I'm gonna let's have some of the um, visual interest so I might do a music sheet and um, one of these book pages perhaps it's gonna be this one and this one and then you'll see here that I've got more pages than I have um, that I'm gonna have signatures um, but that's fine um, you can always then make sort of extra journals from this I just like to have more to choose from it's better to have more to choose from and um, than to kind of be scrabbling around for things so give yourself lots of choice um, when you're picking out your papers um, and then you can just sort of sit and decide what's going to look best so pop this one here um, and we will come in and obviously um, trim this off um, but for now I'm just sort of looking and seeing I think this is looking quite nice um, I tend to have contrasting pages I think they look quite nice so um, you'll see here sort of the manila against the white um, and then the textured or planar papers against something that does have um, interest. So when I come in with this piece, for example, I'm just going to literally eyeball it. Um, no measuring over here. And then just tear that. I'm gonna pick somewhere that obviously doesn't have any interest and slot it in here. So I'm just gonna trim, oops, that's wonky, trim this myself just so that I can see what's going on and then I typically add one or two of the like visual interest pieces um, throughout the pages so we will put this one let's see I quite like that manila this has got text on the other side so we want to be mindful of that I think it's gonna go nicely here and then you've got the text with the plane then and then one from the visual interest page so I will go with let's go with this one so what I'm going to do is just line this up to where the top of the page is and then just fold it like so and then just tear it and don't don't bend these scraps obviously and um, we can keep those for later and then I think this will look really nice on the front of this signature so what I'm gonna do is pop this here I'm gonna use the A6 piece of tea stained paper because I know that that is true A6 because it was obviously halved and halved again from A4 um, and I'm just gonna use that as my guide um, when it comes to sizing down all my papers so what you'll want to end up with is something that is uniform like this. Um, I've just tucked them in for now, but I'm probably going to trim them off. So what I'm going to do is make another two of these inserts um, and then I'll be back to show you how we're going to bind them. <laughs> Oh,
once you have as many signatures as you want for your journal, the next step is to create the cover and the spine. So I'm just going to use some scrapbook paper for the cover. What we want to do with this is cut it to um, the size of the cover. So I'm just going to hold this up here. So to allow for some bulk, you will want to make this um, slightly larger than your pages. And I will cut this one just because obviously it's the cover. So we want that to be nice. And I'm just gonna use this as a guide for my back piece. scrapbook paper and um, trimmed them down to the size of the cover um, and then I have put in between as the spine um, reinforced tea dyed paper so a couple of sheets glued together um, just so that we've got that flexibility but then also um, sturdiness and I've just glued that together here with um, just a print stick and then what I'm gonna do is just reinforce it with some tape um, and then I'll obviously be doing um, end papers so you won't see this for some extra um, sturdiness, I guess. There we go. So it doesn't look very pretty, but um, you're not gonna see most of it anyway. And that's glued down there. And then you can see when we pop these inside, um, it looks something like that. Um, and I've cut these too, too long, so I'm probably gonna need to trim these. Um, so the next step is to sew the signatures into the journal. So now we're gonna bind our signatures into our cover. Um, and all you're gonna need is your thread, um, a bulldog clip just to hold your pages in place, um, some scissors and then obviously a needle. And a good way of knowing how much thread you're going to need for what you're binding um, with this method is to just grab your thread like this and just count one, two, three and then a little bit for good luck. And then just chop that. So that's how much we're going to need. That should be more than enough. And then we'll just try and thread this through the needle, like so. Okay, and then you don't need to tie it on the end because we're only going to go through three times, so you'll, you should be okay. Um, so obviously leave yourself a bit of a tail here. Um, and then grab your clip, and what you'll want to do is find your center page. And you'll want to make sure everything's lined up neatly um, and where you want it. And then you'll just want to clip like this, just so that nothing moves whilst you're trying to sew. So this method, it's really simple. Um, you can measure if you want to be precise, but I don't think you have to. So essentially we're going to make three holes in each of the signatures. So the first hole you're going to want to make is dead center. If you hold the journal closed a little bit, um, it helps you to push through. And then we're gonna want one that's about maybe an inch or so uh, up from the top about here. So there's two. Um, and I just find making these before we go into the sewing um, whoops, is a lot easier. So then we're gonna make another one and again, it's gonna be in a similar position to the one we just made here. And three, so there we've got our three holes. So make sure that your signature is the right way up. Make sure that your cover the right way up that you want it to be. And then we are gonna start with the middle hole. 
So go back through the hole you just poked, which should be easy now that we've poked it through. Pull your thread through till it reaches about the edge of your page and just hold it there with your thumb just so that it doesn't move anywhere. Then you come to your cover. Um, you can pre-poke and pre-measure these holes um, if you want, but I just hold it to just in the front of the cover like this and then just match it up with the middle hole and poke and go through and then come back round, come to your second hole, poke through, we've come round and poke where you want your second hole to be. There and then come around the back and then through the back of this hole. And make sure you don't lose this end here. And then I'm going to come round, come through this hole here, and then poke the hole in lines with the ones you've got here, just here. Pull through. And then once you're through on this side, come back inside the middle hole again. Make sure you've got enough thread to come through. Come through the middle hole again. So you pop out here and you might need to pull the thread round just so that you can have enough to pull through and then come through this middle hole here and back through where we started and then you'll just want to pull that through you can take off your needle now we don't need that and then what you'll want to do is pull this tight so make sure that you've not got any loops here, make sure that it's all flush and then pull this. Now don't pull it up, you want to pull it this way, so pull it across the spine like this to make sure that it's taut and then tie a good few knots just to make sure that this is not going to come out. And then once you've tied a few knots you can snip off the ends. Um, I wouldn't snip it right here, I'd maybe leave yourself a little bit just in case and then snip there. So that's your first signature sewn in um, and then you'll just want to repeat that then for the other two signatures that we've got. Now that our journal is bound and has all of the signatures inside, what I'm going to do is just tidy up these end pages and I'm just going to use again another piece of scrapbook paper just for that um, structural integrity and what I'll choose is probably something to complement the cover. So I quite like these spots. And I'm simply just gonna go ahead and measure up where that will be. And you don't wanna butt up right against the edge because you'll probably find then that it might, um, it might warp. So do leave yourself a little bit of room just for um, the journal to grow and then you can glue it down. So I'll just grab my glue stick and just glue all along the side here and on the inside. And then pop that in and just make sure that the edges are lined up. And then we will just cut this to size. So there we have it. There is the finished journal and all of the journal pages inside ready to be used. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss when I post another video. And if you'd like to see even more of my journals, then follow me over on Instagram. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.